So what time are you going to? Are we going to have class tomorrow? If you're going there to Patia? Um, uh, I think, yes, Gurmaraj, we can still continue. In the evening, I can, I can do the translation in the evening, I think. What, you stay at Dharma's house? Yes. Okay, so... All right. Okay, om ajnana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha vancha kaupa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam bhavan ebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 58, which is entitled uh, Five Queens Married by Lord Krishna. So the chapter began describing how Lord Krishna had gone to Hastinapur. Oh no, he gone to Indra Prastha to spend time with the Pandavas. Now, before that, people thought the Pandavas had all been killed, they'd all burned in the, in the fire when the house of, of Lat was set on fire. So people died and they thought the Pandavas were killed in that fire. But actually the Pandavas were were safe. They had some they'd managed to escape and they were in hiding up until the time when Arjuna won the contest and he won the hand of Draupadi in the archery contest. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so the, the Pandavas had all recently married Draupadi and Lord Krishna came there to Indraprastha and he met them all and he met Draupadi for the first time. <laughs> Draupadi, the feminine form of the name Krishna is Krishna with a long A on the end. So that's the name, that's also a name of Draupadi. And Arjuna, he is also sometimes called Krishna because he's very devoted to Lord Krishna. So he's often also called as Krishna. Uh, and we see devotees also, our devotees, we're often also, people will call us the Krishnas. 
ดาราสาวกของเราก็เรียกว่า Krishna All right so Lord Krishna had met with the Pandavas and Draupadi and then he met also with Kunti and Kunti was remembering all the difficulties which they had and how Krishna had helped them through all their difficulties So, Lord Krishna went with Arjuna one day. Arjuna went into the forest to go hunting. Arjuna, uh, Krishna. So there are three reasons why Arjuna, why the devotee would go hunting. One reason is that he has to practice killing because he's a Kshatriya. So he has to be able to kill without being afraid. And another reason is that some that there are many wild animals in the forest and they can make a lot of danger for the human beings and they can disturb the situation for the people around the forest. And the third reason, the third reason why the Kshatriya will go for hunting is because they will get the wild animals, they will send them back to the palace and they will use them in a big sacrifice when they do animal sacrifices so we use a dead animal and they'll bring it back to life in a new body so those are the three reasons why Arjuna would go hunting. <coughs> so Lord, Lord Krishna went with him because Lord Krishna wants to see to make sure Arjuna is good, good in fighting. So it's also mentioned that when they went for hunting, the Arjuna went with, he, he took with him his Gandiva bow and he took with him his uh, two quiv in inexhaustible quivers of arrows and he took with him, he went on his uh, very special chariot which had been given. So what happened was Lord Krishna had arranged to burn the Gandava forest as an offering to the god of fire, Agni. It said the fire god Agni had some indigestion and so by eating the forest fire then there were many herbs in the forest fire and that could help his indigestion. And so the fire god was so pleased with Arjuna 
that he gave him presents. He gave him this indestructible chariot and he gave him the Gandiva bow. And remember, it was the fire god Agni who gave Krishna, Lord Krishna, the Sudarsan chakra. So the fire god Agni did a lot of service for Arjuna and for Lord Krishna. So Arjuna went hunting in the forest and he killed many wild animals like tigers and rhinoceros and he got hungry, he got tired after a while so he went to the Yamuna to drink some water. And when, when they went to drink water, they saw there was a very beautiful young girl there. So Lord Krishna told Arjuna, go and ask this young lady, who is she? What's she doing here? And the young girl said to Arjuna that I am the daughter of the sun god and uh, my father has built me a house in the Yamuna and I'm waiting here for Lord Vishnu because I want to marry Lord Vishnu. I want to take him as my husband. I don't want any other husband. So she was a really intelligent young woman. She knew that the best husband is Lord Vishnu. And so she wanted to only take him for a husband. She didn't want any other man. So when Lord Krishna heard this, that she was waiting, then Lord Krishna brought her and took her on his chariot and took her back with him and eventually he went back to Dwarka and he got married to Kalindi. Her name was Kalindi and they got married in Dwarka. So that was one queen, and then Lord Krishna. Then there, there was uh, there were these two brothers. They were rulers of Avanti. Avanti. Uh, the, these two brothers were rulers of Avanti, but they were friends of Duryodhan. They were supporters of the Kurus. They didn't support the Pandavas, and they had a very beautiful daughter, sister, the sister of the two rulers. There was a, the sister named Mitravinda who was supposed to get married. So this Mitravinda, she'd been told by her two brothers, don't marry Krishna. Because they didn't like Krishna, because Krishna was support, he's of course the friend of the Pandavas, and the Pandavas were the enemies of Duryodhana. So they told their sister, don't marry Krishna. 
but she wanted to marry Krishna. And so Krishna came there when she was having her Swayamvar and Krishna came and he just kidnapped her, he just took her away and she was happy to go with Krishna. And now we're hearing about how Krishna came to this kingdom of Koshala where King Nagnajit has a very nice daughter. Archana, you're going to have to mute everybody. Hare Krishna, Maharaji, I think you are out of the translation room. So I will add you again one more time. Yeah, I don't know how to set it because my computer is there something wrong with my computer. I now use my cell phone. Really? Okay, okay. Let me add you one more time and see, okay? Okay. Okay, I will unmute everyone and then uh, Guru Maharaj, I think you have to unmute yourself also. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, good. Day. And also... Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, good. So, uh, King Nagnajit had a daughter her name was Nangnajiti, but she also had another name, Satya. So he wanted to get a good husband for his daughter, so he arranged a contest that if somebody wanted to marry his daughter, they had to tie up these seven bulls. So these bulls were very fierce and they had very sharp horns. And they hated the smell of people whenever people would come near them, especially especially the, the Kshatriyas. They would go really angry and they would really attack them. So the father of Satya had arranged this contest just so that Lord Krishna could be the husband of his daughter. He knew that only Krishna could do this. All right. So the king was it was actually very nice and he was very respectful to Lord Krishna and he wanted Krishna to marry his daughter. Hare Krishna, Archana. Hare Krishna. Archana. Hare Krishna. Krishna. 
Recording in progress. Okay, you back. Hare Krishna, Archana. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yeah, we're back. Okay. <laughs> so the king was a very nice man and he wanted his daughter to marry Krishna. So we'll read from the Krishna book now. So it said, Krishna is the super soul of all living creatures. So he could understand the mind of Satya. Krishna is a of all living creatures. Satya is a daughter of the king and she wants to marry Krishna. And Krishna was also very pleased with the worship of her father, the king. When Krishna came there, the king gave Lord Krishna a sitting place and he arranged for all food to be brought there and he gave him a residence, everything he needed. So Krishna could understand that the girl and her father were both eager to have uh, the marriage and to, to be connected to Krishna. So Krishna smiled at the king and then he said to him, Krishna said to the king, he said, you know very well that anyone in the princely order who is regular in his position will never ask anything from anyone. Kshatriya kings, they have that rule, they cannot ask, they cannot beg from anyone. One time Bhima was going to get some lotus flowers and he got stopped by some uh, Gandharva and they said, you have to get permission to take these flowers. <coughs> but Bhima said, I'm a Kshatriya, I don't take permission from anybody. So the same way Krishna, he cannot just simply ask the girl's father that I want your daughter, he can't do that. So Krishna says, if a Kshatriya king has been forbid, he said, he said it's forbidden in the Vedas for a Kshatriya king to ever beg from people. And if a Kshatriya doesn't follow this regulation, this rule, then he's condemned. 
แล้วถ้าเกิดว่ากษัตริย์เนี่ยไม่ยอมทําตามนี้ทําผิดพลาดเนี่ยเขาพูดนี้นะก็จะถูกประนา But then Krishna says Despite this, in, even though it says like that in the scriptures, he said, "Krishna said, 'I am asking you for the hand of your beautiful daughter. I want to marry her.'" And Krishna said that. This I want to show my appreciation for the nice reception which you've given me when I've come here to your palace. And Krishna said to the king that you should also know. That our family, in our family tradition, there is no, there is no, there is no case for offering anything in exchange for accepting your daughter. แต่บอกว่าท่านทุกคนรู้ด้วยว่าตามหลักแล้วนะของเรามันก็ไม่มีวัฒนธรรมอันไหนที่ที่ได้บอกไว้ว่าท่านจะต้องมีการแลกเปลี่ยนอะไรกับลูกสาวของท่าน We cannot pay any price you may ask for your daughter. So Krishna was telling the king that the hand of his daughter Satya, that he would take the hand of his daughter without meeting any of the conditions. Of defeating the seven bulls. So Krishna was telling the king, you know that. I, I don't want this condition. You put this condition. I have to do this. He said, "I don't want to do that." So after Krishna said like that, then the king replies to Krishna. He said, "He said you are the reservoir of all pleasure, all opulences, and all qualities." แต่หลังจากนั้นเนี่ยกระสับเนี่ยก็ตอบเบอร์กริชนาไปว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของของความสุขและความมั่งคั่งทั้งหลาย When the goddess of fortune likes me always lives on your chest ก็บอกว่าเทพธิดาแห่งโชคลาภและสมีเนี่ยประทับอยู่ที่พระอุราของพระองค์เสมอ So I know you're the best husband for my daughter. And the king said, "Both my daughter and I, we've always prayed that you would come and marry her." And you're the chief of the Yadu dynasty. And from the very beginning, I made a vow to marry my daughter to a suitable person who can come out victorious in the test which I have made. And the king said, "I have made this test just to understand the power and the position of the man who is going to marry my daughter." Oh, 
าค่าเนี่ยทำกฎทําเงื่อนไขนี้ขึ้นมาเพื่อที่จะเข้าเข้าใจถึงความอำนาจของผู้ชายที่จะแต่งงานกับสามีแต่งงานกับลูกสาวค่ะ So the king said, "I know you're Lord Krishna, and you're the chief. You're the best of all heroes." So I am sure that you can bring these seven bulls under control without any difficulty. มันไม่การที่ท่านจะต้องปรับกระเบอเจ็ดตัวเนี่ยมันไม่ใช่งานยากสำหรับพระองค์เลย Up to now no other prince could do it no other prince could conquer any of the bulls ถึงตอนนี้เนี่ยไม่มีกษัตริย์องค์ไหนเลยที่สามารถเอาชนะกระบูได้ And some of the people the pe many of the people who tried to conquer the bulls they had their limbs broken By the bulls. So then the king says to Krishna, he said, "If you will kindly, if you can please conquer the bulls and bring them under control, then you will be definitely you can be the husband of my daughter." So when Krishna heard the king speak like that, Krishna could understand that the king did not want to break his vow. So Krishna decided that he would fulfill the desire of the king. So he tightened its belt, and he prepared to fight the bulls. And he immediately expanded himself into seven forms, each one of them. Immediate each seven, so there were seven Krishnas. Just as there were seven bulls, now there were seven Krishnas. And each of the Krishnas, they caught hold of the bull, each bull, and they put the rope. Through its nose. And this way, each of the bulls were brought under control by Krishna. จัดการกับพวกวัวนี้ไอ้พวกโคนี้เนี่ยแต่ก็ทำให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงสามารถควบคุมมันได้ทั้งเจ็ดตัว Now one of the reasons why Krishna expanded himself into seven was because he wanted to convince the the, the daughter of the king. He wanted to convince her about something. ทำไมกิชาถึงต้องแยกล่างออกมาเป็นเป็นเจ็ดคนเจ็ดพระองค์เนี่ยก็เนื่องจากอยากจะเหมือนกับเอาเอาชนะเอาชนะใจของทิดาทั้งหมด Krishna had already married other other women เพราะ Krishna เนี่ยทรงเข้าพิธีสมรสกับกับผู้หญิงคนอื่นแล้ว Right the first queen was Rukmini and then there was Satya Bama and then we heard about Kalindi And Mitra Vinda. Rukmini, Satya Bama, and then uh, Kalindi and Mitra Vinda. 
And, and now this is satya or nagnajiti. So she may be worried that, oh, my husband, Krishna, he's already got many wives, so he won't be able to have any, maybe not get much time to be with me. So Krishna shows her that he can expand himself many times and he can be with each of the queens. Like Krishna wants to encourage this young, young woman, Satya, who is becoming his new wife. He wants to encourage her that he has many forms, he has many expansions, and he can be with each of the queens. So when he's with one queen, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that he cannot be with any other queen. Krishna could be with each and every wife at the same time. So Krishna brought the bulls under his control by putting the rope through their nose. So in this way Krishna took away the, the pride and the strength of the bulls, they became humble. They had previously, they were, you know, they're very famous and they, they're, they're, everybody knew about them, but now they became humble, they lost all their pride. And Krishna had ropes tied, he tied them up and he pulled them, he pulled them just like a child would pull a little toy, wooden bull. So when the king saw Krishna do this, the king was astonished and he was very happy. And he immediately brought his daughter, brought Satya, and he and presented her to Lord Krishna. And Krishna immediately accepted Satya as his wife. And so they were. They had a marriage ceremony, and the, there was a big marriage arranged, and all the the wives of King Nagnajit, they all came to see the marriage of their daughter. And they were very happy to see that Satya got Krishna as her husband. So because the king and the queens were all very happy, there was a, a big celebration all over the city. And Everywhere you could hear the sound of the conch shell and kettle drums and other 
vibrations of music. And the brahmanas, they gave their blessings to the newly married couple by chanting prayers and giving blessings. And everybody in the city, they all dressed, they all decorated themselves very colorfully with different ornaments. And the king, King Nagnajit, was so happy he gave a huge dowry to his daughter and to Krishna. He gave him, first of all, he gave 10,000 cows. And then gave him 3,000 well-dressed young maidservants, all ornamented, nice ornaments, gold ornaments. So this is the system. When a king, whenever the, someone from the king's family will get married, then they have to do like this. They have to give this kind of dowry. When the girl goes, she'll go with the, at least one dozen, at least 12 maidservants will go with her. And after giving the cows and the maidservants, then the king also gave 9,000 elephants. He gave 9,000 elephants. And he gave a hundred times more chariots, and that means he gave 90,000 chariots. Oh, no, not 90, 900,000 chariots. And he gave a hundred times more horses than chariots, so he gave 90 million horses. And he gave a hundred times more men, men servants than horses. So this is it. many kings, they have many maidservants and men servants in their kingdom, in their palace. And they maintain them just like it's their own children or family. So after give the charity, then the king said farewell to his daughter and Krishna and they went back to Dwarka. Krishna, 
แล้วก็ทั้งคู่เนี่ยก็ได้กลับไปที่เมืองดาร์ตัน And they were guarded. He gave them soldiers to guard them on the way. And the king was happy to see his daughter happily married. So before the marriage, before Satya's marriage with Krishna, there'd been many different other kings who tried to come there. And even some of the princes were coming from the Yadu dynasty. They'd also come and they'd tried to win to get Satya for their wife. So when they heard that Krishna had succeeded, that he tied up all the seven bulls and he'd married Satya, then they were envious. And all these princes, they all, they all came around Krishna, and they and then they be, fired arrows, and they they began to fight with Krishna. But Arjuna was there, and Arjuna, he he. He took charge. He fought against all these kings, and he defeated them and drove them away. Because Arjuna is a very dear friend of Krishna, so Arjuna likes to do this service for Krishna. Krishna, Arjuna took up his bow, the Gandiva bow, and he chased all the princes, just like a lion chases the little animals. And it said Arjuna drove them all away. He didn't kill any of them. He just he just got them all to run away to leave Krishna alone. So in this way, Lord Krishna, with his new wife Satya and the big dowry, they came back to Dwarka. So Krishna had another aunt, and her his other aunt, Kunti was one aunt of Krishna, but there was another aunt of Krishna whose name was Shruta Kirti. And she was married, and she lived in Kaikeya province, and she had a daughter whose name was Badra. So Badra wanted to marry Krishna, and so her brother gave him Give her to Krishna. And Krishna accepted her as his wife. And then there was one more wife. Krishna got. He married the daughter of the king of Madras, whose name was Lakshmana. Like a, like, like a, like a, like a, 
So Lakshmana had all the good qualities. And Krishna took her away. Krishna kidnapped her, just as Garuda takes the nectar away from the demigods. They were, have, they were having a Swayamvara ceremony where she was going to pick her husband, but Krishna just came and kidnapped her. So this way Krishna got five new wives. Right, there was Kalindi, and then Mitravinda, and then Satya, and then we heard Bhadra, and now Lakshmana. Okay. So th this is mentioned all in this chapter, five wives. But actually Krishna had many thousands of wives beside these. Haribo? Archana? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Your voice is very poor. Come on. Yes. What happened? I don't know. I'm just talking normally. Are you using a mobile phone again? No. I think maybe some message coming. I think maybe that because of that. Okay. So Krishna had thousands of wives and he got these wives after he killed a demon named Bomasura. All these young girls, they were all held prisoners in the palace of Bomasura, and Krishna released them and married them all. So we will hear about that in the next chapter. Okay, so we will stop here today. Okay, so five wives were married by Krishna in this chapter. And these five wives added to the three others. Remember the three others? Uh, they are the first three, Rukmini, Satya, Bama, and then uh, Rukmini, Satya, Bama, and the other one was, well, Rukmini, Satya, Bama, and Sat, well, Sat, uh, Jambavati. Oh yeah, Jambavati. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. right, Jambavati, the daughter of Jambavan. So uh, and then here we have five more, right? Kalindi, Mitravinda, and then uh, Satya, and then Bhadra and Lakshmana. So those are the eight principal queens of Lord Krishna. Mm.
จะแต่งงานใหม่เติมอีกกาลินดีมิตรบินดาสัตยาแล้วก็อะไรนะสัตยาแล้วก็อีกสองอีกสองคนอีกห้าคนเนี่ยเติมอีกก็ทั้งหมดก็เป็นแปดคนเพราะฉะนั้นแปดบัตรา and l a k s h m a n a All right, so eight principal queens, just like Krishna and Vrindavan, eight principal gopis. So Krishna and Dwarka, he is also eight principal queens. Mm-hmm. All right. So the the eight gopis, you know, Tungavijaya, Chitra, Champakalata, Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Ranga Devi, Sudevi. They are the eight gopis in Vrindavan. But Krishna and Dwarka, the queens in Dwarka, they're different from the gopis. Okay, we'll stop and ask. What are the questions? Today, we'll just come and yell. We just want to ask some questions. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I think Shaya Madhuri raised her hand. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Today, my name is Prasakti Mahamboh Officers. Okay, to see the Baba. อาจารย์ไปให้พี่หน่อยนะคะคือพี่เคยได้ยินสาวกเมืองนอกพูดกันว่าเหมือนกับว่ามานะคะแบบมาในยุคกะลียุคเนี้ยเหมือนกับว่าไม่มีมาเป็นตัวเป็นตนแต่ว่าสามารถอยู่ในจิตใจคนทุกคนได้เขาพูดเหมือนกับว่ามาเนี่ยสามารถปลอมตัวเป็นสาวกเพื่อที่จะมาปฏิบัติเพื่อจะขอความหลุดพ้นอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะพี่เลยอยากจะถามกรุมหาราชว่ามีความคิดเห็นว่ายังไงแล้วมันเป็นเรื่องจริงหรือเปล่าอะไรอย่างนี้ค่ะโอเคขอบคุณค่ะ uh, she heard about it uh, she heard that in Kali Yuga there is uh, not a demon like we can see that they are a demon like that but they are inside of every human being And sometimes this demon, they also come in the form of devotee, so that they can get the liberation or something like that. Uh, is that true? Well, I never had any demon come as came as devotee, but sometimes <laughs> devo devotees have to become demons. Sometimes they get cursed, and they become demons, but then they get go back to Godhead. เอ่อแต่ไม่ไม่เคยได้ยินแบบนี้มาเหมือนกันแต่ว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยในอดีตเนี่ยอาจจะมีสาวกแบบว่าโดนแช่งมาให้แบบว่ากลายกลายมาเป็นมารบ้างอะไรอย่างนี้แต่ว่าสุดท้ายเนี่ยก็จะได้รับความหลุดพ้นแล้วก็ได้ไปหาพระเจ้า Just like the Vrita Sura, Vrita Sura, he was before he was Maharaj Chitraketu, so Maharaj Chitraketu got cursed by the wife of Lord Shiva. And so he became Vritasura. He became a big demon, but he was still a devotee. But he got killed by Indra, and he went back to Godhead. ต่อสู้กับพระอินทร์จนแพ้ไปแล้วก็เขาก็ได้เขาก็ลุกลงไป Yeah and uh, other demons just like Yeah Jai and Vijay Jai and Vijay they got cursed and they came down to earth they had to take birth as th demons three times before they went back to Godhead So like that, sometimes it happens that 
devotees, they get cursed to become demons and they have to take the demon body and then they go back to God. Because Krishna likes to fight. So when he fights, he just cannot fight with anybody because they're, they're not good enough fight. So Krishna says sometimes he'll send devotees into the material world to become demons, to give him a good fight. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that all right, Shaya? Uh, uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, but I, I have a little bit uh, question. Uh, อุทิศตนเสียสละหลับใช้โดยไม่บริสุทธิ์เหมือนเขาคาดหวังอ่าการสนองประสาทสัมผัสอะไรประมาณเนี้ยเขาก็เลยพูดเรื่องนี้ข
คำปรารถนาเหล่านี้แต่ว่าเราควรที่จะมีความต้องการที่จะอยากเป็นผู้รับใช้เราสามารถจะเดินรอยตามของราชการนี้ได้นะคะอ่า second question Uh, why Krishna asked uh, Nagnajit the hand of Satya without uh, fulfilling the condition initially? Uh, is there is it a test for Nagnajit or? Well, Krishna is a Shatriya. He said Shatriyas don't beg. They don't ask anybody for anything. They want something. They just take. All right. I I told about the lotus flower. Bhima wanted to take a lotus flower, and the one Gandharva said, "No, you have to get permission." Bhima said, "I'm a shatri. I don't take permission from anybody." So Krishna was telling the king, also he said, you know, in our family we don't pay for anything. If we want a queen, we don't pay to get the woman. We take the woman. Right? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Now it's clear, Guru Maharaj. I I was thinking why Krishna first didn't agree to uh, to subdue the bulls and get uh, Satya's hand. Yeah, I was thinking like that. Yeah, yeah. Because he's telling the king, we don't pay. We don't do it. We don't do it. We don't do what you want. We take. We just take what we want. <laughs> We're the king. We're the rulers. We just take what we want. We don't listen to you, what you want. We don't listen to your conditions. Yes, good. Yeah. You know, he he goes to the swayamvara and uh, kidnaps the. Wives, but in the swayamvara they can select uh, Krishna, right, Guru Maharaj? Yes, but he, he doesn't wait. He doesn't wait for all them. He just comes and he takes. Yeah. Yeah. He could he could wait and just let her pick Krishna, but he chose to just take her before all the kings, just come in front of all the kings and take her. Yes, Guru. Because he's the supreme the, personality of Godhead. Mm. So he makes all these other kings angry. That's his past, his pastime. Yeah. Yes, Guru. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he got one wife, Lakshmana, from Med Madras province. So it's one thing. Chennai was previously named as Madras. Is it the same, or uh, can be? Yeah, I think it must be the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they change the name to Chennai. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yuvati Sachi. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, O Guru Chishila Prabhupada. Uh, why does even uh, Pious activity in material world lead to the degradation. Not only sinful activity, but pious activity also. For example, like charity or help to somebody, lead to degradation. Lead person to degradation. Well, sometimes you give if you give charity to someone who's unqualified to receive it. They don't know how to use the charity. Just like you give charity to somebody who is in the mode of ignorance, they will use the money to go and buy drugs. Right? So you give charity, but it leads to degradation. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Hmm. So, uh, you, you, if there's 
some drunkard in the street and he's asking you for money, when you give him money, he'll go and buy more beer, buy more alcohol. So it leads to more degradation. So we have to be very careful who we give charity to. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions in the, from the Chinese devotees in the chat? Mm, I can't see anything. Sati捐献器官的话就是捐器官的话对我们的这个灵性和就是之后有什么影响没有可不可以做这个器官是什么这个那个东西这个是那个方法他们就是人体的人体的比如我捐献眼睛啊捐献肝脏啊他们没有知觉离开身体对就是要看一下什么 捐献就是在人离开身体的时候要捐献这个啊哈给别的人我们的身体啊哈对对所以他的问题是什么就是这个会对我们的灵性或者是我们死后的转生有影响吗没有一般没有可以做捐献吗嗯可以啊嗯你
just like you you have a motor car and you want to change the seat in the motor car and so the driver gets out of the car and they put in a new seat in the car and so the, then the same driver gets back in the car and so the driver is like the soul so you change someone's heart then the soul gets out of one heart it gets in the new heart it's a it's a it's the, the same soul, but it's going in a different heart, just like you change the seat in the motor car. Right? The motor car, you can change the seat. And so the same way you can change the heart, or you can change the organs of the person, but the person's still the same, because the soul is the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> เหมือนกับร่างกายเนี่ยมีการเปลี่ยนสมมุติบางทีนะหัวใจเรามีปัญหาเราก็ต้องผ่าตัดหัวใจเปลี่ยนหัวใจแต่ว่าหัวใจม
And sometimes somebody just dies. And so from the dead body, they get a young person dies and their organs are young. So they take their organs and they give the organs to somebody else who needs the new organs. Yeah, then, then also karma is there. Huh? Then also the, the person who dies, if they, if, they, if they remove his organs, then also he gets karma? No, a person is dead. He's already dead, so... Okay. It's not good. Then no karma? No. Okay. Okay, thank you, Gurudev. Mm -hmm. Okay, no more questions here? Archana? Okay, so we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank all the devotees. Thank all the translators. And take care. Have a nice weekend. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Ki Jai. 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 Jai.